Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our ceremony will begin in just a few moments. At this time, please take your seats and turn off or silence all electronic devices. As a reminder, military members in uniform should render a salute on the first note of ruffles and flourishes and the national anthem. During the national anthem, our civilian guests should place their right hand over their heart and veterans may also render a military salute. At the end of the ceremony, please remain at your seats until the official party departs from the parade field. Thank you. Members of Air Mobility Command, distinguished visitors, and honored guests, good morning. I am Lieutenant Colonel Sean Timpson, your narrator. And on behalf of today's presiding officer, General Mark A. Welsh III, United States Air Force Chief of Staff, welcome to today's change of command. Today, the reins of responsibility and leadership for Air Mobility Command will pass from General Paul J. Selva to General Darren W. McDew. Our change of command ceremony is a time-honored military tradition deeply rooted in history and dates back to the time of Frederick the Great of Prussia. During that period, military organizations developed flags unique to their unit with specialized colors and designs. When the soldiers followed their leader into battle, their flag was used to provide a very visible point around which members of the unit could rally during the conflict. To this flag, both commander and soldiers of a unit would dedicate their loyalty, trust, and allegiance. The formal change of command ceremony afforded these troops the opportunity to witness a new leader assuming their dutiful position. The flights which stand before you today represent the men and women of Air Mobility Command who stand proudly in defense of our nation, both at home and abroad, executing the command's mission daily to provide global air mobility, to deliver the right effects at the right place at the right time. AMC Airmen, active duty, Air National Guard, Air Force Reserve, and civilians provide airlift, air medical evacuation, and aerial fueling for all America's armed forces to achieve unrivaled global reach for America, always. We would like to take this opportunity to welcome the many distinguished guests and honored visitors joining us today. Please hold your applause until all guests have been introduced. Joining us today is General Welsh's wife, Betty, General Fraser's wife, Bev, General Selva's wife, Ricky, and General McDew's wife, Evelyn. We are also honored to have in attendance the Selva family, his father, Dominic, and Mary, his mother, his niece, Ms. Megan Selva, Mrs. Selva's sister, Ms. Victoria Smith, his brother, Colonel Retired Michael Selva, and his wife, Colonel Retired Karen Selva, his sister, Ms. Mary Lou Katnick, his brother, Dr. Tom Selva, and his wife, Dr. Jeannie Selva. Special guests, Major General Key Sable and his wife, Carol. Lieutenant Dan Mosher and his wife, Nina. And Mr. Harry Hope and his wife, Teresa. Also with us today is General and Mrs. McDew's family. Their daughter, Miss Keisha McDew, and her friend, Rick Melvin. Their son, Lieutenant Commander Keith Thomas, and his wife, Rebecca. In addition, General and Mrs. McDew would like to recognize a few of their special guests. Reverend Willie Dix, Miss Kanta Johnson and her daughter Rhonda, Dr. William, William Sutherland and his wife Sylvia, Mr. Nick Guerra and his wife Jane, Mr. Jason Yaley, Miss Shelley Fitzhugh, and Miss Imelda Jones. Also in attendance today, former United States Representative, 12th District, the Honorable Jerry Costello and his guest, Ms. Mary Shaplin, former Commander-in-Chief, United States Transportation Command and Commander, Air Mobility Command, General Dwayne Cassidy, General Hansford T. Johnson, and his wife, Ann. Former Commander, United States Transportation Command, General Duncan J. McNabb. The Honorable Mark Kern, Chairman, St. Cla Clair County Board. The Honorable Mark Eckert, Mayor, City of Belleville. 
The Honorable Ken Mueller, Mayor, Village of Swansea. The Honorable Alan Adamite, Mayor, City of Troy. The Honor Honorable Charles Carricker, former Mayor, City of Troy. The Honorable Gerald Doughty, Mayor, City of Mascuda. The Honorable John Miller, Mayor, City of Collinsville. Former Commanders and Air Mobility Command, General Arthur J. Light, and General Raymond E. Johns, Jr., and his wife, Diana. Former Vice Chief of Staff, Headquarters, United States Air Force, General Carol H. Chandler. Former Commander, Pacific Air Forces, and Air Component Command, General Paul V. Hester. Finally, we'd also like to extend a warm welcome to all other general officers, commanders, directors, chief master sergeants, coworkers, family members, and special friends. Thank you for attending today. The Commander of Troops for today's ceremony is Major General Michael Stow, Director of Strategic Plans, Requirements, and Programs, Headquarters Air Mobility Command. Today's music is provided by the United States Air Force Band of Mid-America under the direction of Major Christina Moore Yoritia. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of our official party and remain standing for the presentation of command, ruffles and flourishes, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Stow will now present the command to General Welsh following the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes and the General's March.
Ladies and gentlemen, the invocation this morning will be offered by AMC Command Chaplain, Colonel Mark Barnes. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Lord, we just thank you for this beautiful day, this country and great Air Force that we serve. We also come to you today to thank you as we've had the blessing to walk and listen to and follow two giants of military leadership. Both these men have had the airman's heart, spirit, and soul at the forefront as they have carried out every mission and task before them. Bless this ceremony and these leaders as they pass the yoke. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Barnes. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, General Mark A. Welsh III. Thank you, folks, and thanks, Lieutenant Colonel Timpson, for the introduction and for serving as our narrator today. I'd also like to thank Chaplain Barnes for that invocation, all the folks who put this great ceremony together, protocol, the Honor Guard, public affairs forces, the security forces who are keeping an eye on us, the Mid-America Band, the escorts, all the great medical folks helping in the back row over there, and all the volunteers who helped pull this together. Thank you so much for what you've done to honor two great leaders. To all of our guests who are here today, military leaders, past and present, national, state, and city officials, civic and business leaders, community partners, friends of our Air Force, it's great to see all of you again. A special thank you today to the family members and personal friends who are here with us to celebrate these two wonderful leaders. And of course, thanks to Paul and Ricky Selva and Darren and Evelyn McDew for giving all of us a reason to be here. Finally, and most importantly, thanks to the Airmen of Air Mobility Command for everything you do for our Air Force, for our Joint Force, and for our nation. You guys just rock, and you look awfully good standing out there. Thank you for doing it. This is a special day not just for the Selva and McDo families, but for our Air Force family, because today we get to acknowledge the profound impact of a great leadership team and we welcome another one into the job. This command, its commander, and the tens of thousands of airmen that they're privileged to lead put the global and global vigilance reach and power. Without you, we're a North American Air Force, but with you, we're an Air Force that can be anywhere in the world in a matter of hours the only Air Force that can do that. An incredible asymmetric advantage for our nation. That's nothing new to you, of course. You've been doing global mobility for a long time now. In World War II, mobility airmen flew the hump over the Himalayas to resupply and rearm the Flying Tigers in China. During the Berlin airlift, mobility airmen built the lifeline that saved tens of thousands of German citizens when the Soviets cut off ground supply lines. Those airmen saved a city inspired a nation, and united freedom-loving people around the world behind their effort. Today, we're honored to be joined by men who built and led this incredible mobility machine. Air Force legends like General Dwayne Cassidy, General H.T. Johnson, General Tony Robertson, General Duncan McNabb, General Art Light, General Ray Johns, most recently General Will Frazier of Transportation Command, and so many others who are sitting in this audience today. And you can add General Paul Selva to that legacy. General McDo has some big shoes to fill, but he'll fill them because just like those other great officers I just mentioned, he has you, the amazing airmen of AMC. Let me share an observation from my time as a member of the Joint Chiefs. In all the discussions we've had in Washington about u moving U.S. military people or equipment anywhere in the world in response to a crisis or to a humanitarian disaster, I have never heard anyone ask, can we get it there? That is an unbelievably huge compliment to the entire mobility team. The air crews, the loggies, the contingency response folks, the great team at U.S. Transportation Command, and everyone else who breathes life into the mobility enterprise. General Paul Selva knows a thing or two about that enterprise. As a young airman, he flew both KC-135s and KC-10s, and he flew them pretty well. And as the commander of Air Mobility Command, he's been absolutely magic. In Afghanistan, all of you and the other men and women he leads hauled millions of passengers and millions of tons of cargo 
into, around, and out of harm's way. You passed over a billion pounds of gas to thirsty receivers needing to get back into the fight. AMC aeromedical evacuation crews saved countless lives and brought our wounded warriors home. Here at home, active guard and reserve MAFS qualified C-130 crews fought fires and saved lives and property all over the western half of our country. By the way, this command continues to be the total force model for our Air Force. In Afghanistan, in the Rockies, and around the world, the AMC total force team remains the best example of seamless integration and mission success in the United States military today. During his tenure, General Selva pushed that effort. He also pushed the airdrop and aeromedical evacuation missions in this command to even greater success. You used to airdrop supplies to zones the size of this parade field. Now you guys can almost land a pallet on this podium, which is a little unnerving. <laughs> Your aeromedical evacuation survival rate is now at 96% and climbing, higher than ever before. With critical care evacuation teams, you can even turn the back of an airplane into a flying intensive care unit. With tactical critical care evacuation teams, you've taken that capability right to the point of injury, and 379 more wounded warriors are alive today because of it. And now, with the enhanced tactical critical care evacuation teams, we can actually do surgeries during evacuation flights in the back end of your aircraft. Imagine the look on doctors' faces 20 years ago if someone had told them we'd be doing all of this in 2014. It's just incredible. And it's all because of great airmen and the remarkable commanders who have enabled them, as Paul Selva has done for the last year and a half. And now General Selva heads across the street to command U.S. Transportation Command, and he'll be spectacular. And the best news for the Joint Force is that Ricky's going with him. As a graduate of the Air Force Academy, an airman for nine years herself, an amazing and incredibly supportive spouse, she knows firsthand the challenges our military families face, and she works constantly to minimize them. She's worked tirelessly on sexual assault prevention efforts. She's mentored spouses at every level, and she's Paul's biggest fan and his most honest critic. He just doesn't succeed without her. Paul and Ricky somehow thank you just doesn't seem to be enough, but thank you. And congratulations, lead them well. One of the great things about the Air Force is that every time we watch a great leader walk out the door, we get to see another one walk in, and that's clearly the case today. Darren McDo is all about being an airman. His dad's a retired Air Force Master Sergeant. He grew up wanting to be like his dad and the people he saw around his dad and he followed that dream. He's also worked pretty hard. He was the number one captain out of 500 at Castle Air Force Base. He served as President Clinton's military aide as a young major. He was the number one squadron commander out of 25 in the wing at Charleston. He was the number one colonel at McCord Air Force Base and the number one of seven ops group commanders in the numbered Air Force as a group commander. Later, he was the number one wing commander in 15th Air Force, the number one brigadier general in 18th Air Force, the list just goes on and on and on, always number one. And for the past two years, he's led 18th Air Force brilliantly. In that job, he and his people played a critical role in every one of the AMC accomplishments I mentioned earlier. And Darren brings his own secret weapon to the fight. He and Evelyn have been married for 30 years, and Darren admits that she really doesn't need him for much, but he relies on her for just about everything. They're a very special team. The good news is that most of you already know them, and those of you who don't are in for a treat. Folks, Air Mobility Command remains in very good hands. The long line of great leaders continues. Darren, I'd ask you to please take a look around this parade field. At these airmen, your airmen, America asks big things of them every day, and they always deliver. And I need you to lead them. I need you to inspire them. I need you to take care of them. To the Airmen of Air Mobility Command, thank you for the wonderful way you serve General Selva. And I ask that you take care of General McDo just as well. And finally, air power. America calls, AMC halls. Thank you for that.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the Distinguished Service Medal to General Silva. Attention to orders. Citation to accompany the award of the Distinguished Service Medal, First Oak Leaf Cluster, to Paul J. Selva, the President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, July 9th, 1918, awards the Distinguished Service Medal to General Paul J. Selva for exceptionally meritorious service and the duties of great responsibility. General Selva distinguished himself as the Vice Commander, Pacific Air Forces Command, Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, and Commander, Air Mobility Command, Scott Air Force Base, Illinois, from 25 October 2011 to 5 May 2014. During this period, General Selva's steady hand was instrumental in executing the successful day-to-day -day operations of the Pacific Air Force's command during a period of nearly constant change, including the deactivation of 13th Air Force and the absorption of its personnel in mission into the headquarters Pacific Air Force's command. Furthermore, his vision and drive were in integral as he laid the foundation for the development of Pacific Air Force's command's operationally focused 2013 command strategy. As commander, Air Mobility Command, General Selva's leadership spurred the command to execute over 109,700 sorties that transported 1.7 million passengers, 650,000 tons of cargo, and offloaded 1.3 billion pounds of fuel. In addition, his leadership drove the command's response in support of the United States Africa Command, African Union, and French forces in Operation Juniper Micron, executing over 200 airlift sorties, moving 1,630 coalition personnel and 2,639 short tons of equipment to support operations in Mali. As the rapid global mobility core function lead integrator, he shepherded the modernization of the Mobility Air Force's fleet this included the completion of critical design review for the KC-46A Pegasus and the 30-year multi-major command C-130 investment roadmap study, providing the Mobility Air Forces a blueprint for successful modernization and recapitalization with potential cost avoidance of more than $450 million. General Silva oversaw the attainment of the initial operational capability for the C-5M, guaranteeing the viability of the nation's strategic lift capability. Finally, General Selva expertly guided the first in-depth review of the $1.9 billion Civil Reserve Air Fleet in 60 years, ensuring a sustainable commercial capability that is ready to augment organic airlift and meet the needs of the geographic combatant commanders worldwide. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of General Selva reflect the highest credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander, United States Transportation Command, General William M. Frazier III. Well, good morning, and thank you very much. This is one, one beautiful day, is it not? One in which we should rejoice. And I'm honored to participate in this change of command ceremony, but I'm also privileged and humbled to speak after General Welch. He's always been a tough act to follow, but let me tell you another tough act, and that's Betty. Betty, thank you so much for coming here to help us celebrate this momentous occasion for the Selvas and the McDews. And I want to thank you for everything that you've done to support Mark over these many, many years. 
We owe you a debt of gratitude, and you don't get enough thanks. We really, really appreciate you and your tremendous service and your selfless sacrifice. Thanks, Betty. <laughs> I also want to offer a uh, warm and hearty welcome to the numerous active, retired, general and flag officers, as well as past and current commanders, federal, state, local officials, distinguished guests, friends, family, and members serving with Air Force Air Mobility Command, and also the United States Transportation Command. Speaking, though, also of special people, I also want to offer a heartfelt appreciation to Ricky and Evelyn for their selfless service and for their sacrifice. They, too, are doing wonderful things for our airmen, and your unwavering support has directly and successfully contributed to the defense of this great nation that many never see what you do. Thank you so very much. <laughs> you know, lastly, I want to acknowledge and thank our total force and industry teammates who perform a significant role for United States Transportation's command ability to accomplish our mission. As you all know, the sun never sets on U.S. Transcom. You know, this historic event offers me the opportunity also to thank the troop professionals that, pre that are prepared and proud men and women of Air Mobility Command. U.S. Transcom could not deliver without you. To the over 130,000 active duty Air National Guard, Air Force Reserve Command, as well as Department of Defense civil servants, you flawlessly conduct global air mobility, delivering the right effects at the right place, at the right time, 24-7, 365. Just ask the grateful residents of Tacloban, a region in the Philippines who survived the devastation of Typhoon Haiyan just last November. Air Mobility Command spearheaded that relief effort with almost, with after one month of the storm, they had flown over 200 sorties, delivering over 2 million pounds of relief supplies and equipment as well as deploying 13,000 troops and aid workers to help restore the region. Or ask the deployed commanders around the globe, around the globe, who rely on your support. Since 9-11, men and women of AMC have transport, transported over 22 million passengers, 8 million tons of cargo, supporting our operations. And you should be justifiably proud, just as you heard in General Welch's remarks, the numerous accomplishments that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. As a committed Transcom teammate, AMC has significantly assisted our command in becoming the most respected and world-leading joint deployment and distribution enterprise that the world has ever seen. There is no other nation that can do what we do. In addition, your operational efficiency and effectiveness has directly contributed to Transcom's placement at the tip of the spear in pioneering military logistics to succeed in an evolving world environment. You know, since assuming command 18 months ago, General Paul Selva has led AMC to not only focus on proficiently and proactively performing its core missions of air refueling, air lift, air drop, aeromedical evacuation, and humanitarian delivery, but he's also helped you keep a keen eye, a keen eye on the future for providing and enhancing air mobility services anywhere, anytime, with unknown calls to still be made while you save lives and reduce human suffering, or you provide for the warriors in the field. During your tenure, during his tenure as AMC commander, General Selva has emphasized a better way of doing business while planning to achieve even better results in the future. Our nation, the Department of Defense, Transcom, and AMC are grateful and thankful to Paul and Ricky Selva for their wisdom, their vision, and always putting others first. Paul, thank you very much. <laughs> Today, a new chapter in AMC begins with General Darren McDew as he takes command. You've already heard, and I will reiterate that Darren is an admired and proven leader with a distinguished and comprehensive mobility background, but he's had many other jobs that have positioned him to take this command. 
He also brings an impressive breadth and depth of experience outside the mobility realm. He served as the Air Force Chief's Chief of Staff's Operation Group, and he's also the Chief of the Air Force Senate Liaison Division. Additionally, he served as the Air Force aide to the President, as you've already heard, and as the Director of Air Force Public Affairs. Additionally, he's flown most all of our AMC aircraft, has commanded at every level, and he's also well known as a commander of an Air Force Direct Reporting Unit. He's definitely the right person to lead AMC, and I have every confidence in his expertise, his background, and knowledge of mobility operations that will enable AMC to meet the challenges of the future and take it to the next level. Evelyn, again, I want to thank you for all you've done, not only to support Darren, but for, for what you're going to do as you continue to help care for our airmen. We all know that you'll continue to do many good things for us. So Darren and Evelyn, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our heart. I can't think of a better dynamic duo to take AMC to that next level. So congratulations. So to Paul and Ricky, Bev and I pass on our most sincere thanks for a job well done. To Darren and Evelyn, we also wish you both the very, very best in Godspeed as you move forward. Thank you very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, Air Mobility Command, General Paul J. Silva. Good morning, everyone. Chaplain, thank you for the weather. I'm reminded of Patton's chaplain in the Battle of the Bulge when he said, please pray for no overcast so the airdroppers can get our supplies in. He delivered, and so have you. Thank you so much. Government leaders, Military leaders, wing commanders, chiefs, fellow general officers, thank you all for being here today. You honor us with your presence. General Welch, Betty, thank you so much for being here to preside over this ceremony and for the leadership and the guidance and the friendship you've given Ricky and I. It's been wonderful. Will, Bev, it's been wonderful having you as neighbors, and you've always held out a a helping hand, a guiding hand, and friendship when we needed it. Thank you for all of your help. We, we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed working with you. But this is a bit of a bittersweet day for Ricky and I because we do have to bid farewell to the Airmen of Air Mobility Command, if ever so briefly. It makes it a little easier today that, that we are wrapped in the warmth of family and friends, the people who are the golden threads in the fabric of our lives, who wrap us in their love and friendship every day, and who have helped make us who we are. Thank you all for being here. I want to speak briefly to the Airmen of Air Mobility Command because you have delivered. You have kept a riveting focus on doing what needs to get done on answering the call wherever it came from so that others could prevail. It is a focus that you share individually and collectively on taking care of others, and it has made this a very special command. I asked you to do three things. To focus on mission, to develop an environment of dignity and respect, and to train for be read, to be ready for whatever might come. You have delivered, and for that, I am eternally grateful. I also am aware that I do walk in the shadow of a handful of giants. The mobility nobility that were described in the promotion ceremony about an hour and a half ago, the former commanders of United States Transportation Command and Air Mobility Command. You built this command into the best mobility force mankind has ever seen. And you wove it into the greatest air force humanity has ever known. You have not been bashful about giving me advice. You have been generous in your friendship. I can only ask one thing. Please do all of that for Darren and Evelyn. Because today we give this command to the hands of one of the most capable officers I have ever met. 
I've known Darren for over 25 years. We first met in what was then called the CBPO in the Pentagon when Major McDo was waiting to get his new ID card as he headed down to Charleston. I was impressed with him that day. I've watched him ever since, and I've been impressed with his leadership and with his passion for taking care of airmen, all of which he gets from Evelyn. She will hold you in the palm of her hand and take you right into her heart. She cares more about airmen than almost anybody I know. So it's a privilege today, and, Darren and Evelyn, to pass the flag to you and to put these 132,000 airmen in your care. You will be great. You will be great. To the Airmen of Air Mobility Command, I'll say it again. When we call, you deliver. You answer the call so that others may prevail, so they may be successful, so that they may be carried to war, may be sustained, and may be brought home. You deliver it all, and for that, I salute you. God bless you all. General Silva, it has been our great honor to serve under your command. The men and women of Air Mobility Command, thank you for your leadership, support, and dedication. We wish you and your family good luck and Godspeed in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the official change of command ceremony in which General Welch will now transfer command of Air Mobility Command from General Silva to General McDew. General Frazier will then designate General McDew as the Air Component Commander for United States Transportation Command. Air Mobility Command's Command Chief Master Sergeant, Vicki Gamble, will serve as an escort for both flag ceremonies. Attention to orders. Effective 5 May 2014, Department of the Air Force, Headquarters, Washington, D.C. By order of General Mark A. Welsh III, Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, General Paul J. Selva relinquishes command and General Darren W. McDew assumes command of Air Mobility Command. Ladies and gentlemen, General Frazier will now designate General McDew as the Air Component Commander for United States Transportation Command. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Darren W. McDew, the 11th Commander of Air Mobility Command. And there are remarks here. <laughs> Go figure. Um, I want to echo something that uh, General Frazier said. What a beautiful Lord's Day. Uh, thank you, uh, Sean, wherever you are over there. You've done a great job today as the MC, uh, just as you have done every single day for 18th Air Force, and I appreciate it. Uh, General and Mrs. Welsh, General and Mrs. Frazier, General and Mrs. Selva, General Cassidy, General Johnson, General McNabb, General Light, General Johns, General Chandler, General Hester. Wow. Fellow leaders, community and civic leaders whose support gives our military the strength to serve and succeed. Honored guests, members of this great community, current and former soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen, family and friends, good morning. What a glorious morning it is indeed. Let me begin by saying I'm awed by today's events. I can't find the words to describe how I feel this very moment. As I stand here before you today, I can honestly say that I could never have dreamed this moment. As I took the commissioning oath as an officer at the Virginia Military Institute in May of 1982, there was absolutely no way to predict that 32 years later, the Chief of Staff of the Air Force would hand me the Admirability Command Guidon. This is humbling indeed. Thank you, General Welsh. I appreciate the trust and confidence you and Secretary James have in taking me on this important role. Evelyn and I are grateful for the opportunity. I am privileged to take command from also an amazing leader, mentor, and friend, General Paul Selva. I joke with him often, he should have killed me off a long time ago. It is his fault that I'm standing here today. He has magnificently led so through some turbulent times for AMC, but has postured us well for the future. Paul, and I can just say that for a few more minutes, I get to say Paul this very moment, but I'm going to take advantage of it. You and Ricky have been tremendous, uh, not just to us personally and professionally, but to all of these great men and women we all love so dearly. I am excited to continue to serve with you for a few more years and to live next to you. That is also going to be fun. To echo General Sava, I want to recognize the many leaders before me that have shaped Air Mobility Command. General Cassidy, Johnson, McNabb, Light, Johns. You gave this command structure. You instilled and forged our culture. You enabled our mobility airmen to become even more valued members of the greatest Air Force the world has ever